do you see real impact happening or, or what will the impact look like, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a remarkable timing in an election year, in a census year, uh, yeah. which is something else we've got to center right now. So I think that stuff is is happening. I'm appreciative of the networks and tables um, that have been built. Uh, again, you talk about, of course, the Fellowship of Reconciliation, uh, the Movement for Black Lives, um, the Color of Change, others who are doing national work uh, and mobilizing the Black Church Pact uh, to help to put a moral voice and face on this. I do think you're right that we have, um, and we've got to follow those who have done early work in digital or organizing um, in order to be able to do that. The moral voice work, though, that folks like the Fellowship are doing, Sojourners are doing, the Proctor Conference are doing, um, you know, the Children's Defense Fund at another level, uh, doing around advocacy and framing, I think what we need is a way to bring that piece together. Because messaging will be as important, it always perhaps has been, but messaging and particularly moral messaging yeah. will be as important as mobilization work. Right. Um, and I say that because we can't get together and touch as yeah, much. Exactly. So, so the power and clarity of virtual and digital messaging uh, is much more important now than it ever has been. In the midst of all this pain and suffering, what do you hope uh, people can take away from it when we finally get out of this? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian pastor. Um, and for me, um, what this feels like to me, I mean, A, I think we over, um, because of the elements of mourning and because of the reality of the, the, the pieces around health and because we have been separated from one another, the prevailing image for me is healing healing, uh, speaking to coming together, healing, thinking yeah. about Jesus's stories where he's not, you know, those who read those biblical narratives where uh, part of what he's doing when he talks about it, when he heals a leper, he's not curing necessarily, not, not all of a sudden that their, that their, uh, uh, their skin uh, is, is made pure, but rather they've been isolated from community and the disconnection from community yeah. is that which needs to be reconnected. And when he touches them, that is the healing because they are reconnected to community. So, so there are elements where we're talking about what it means to come back together as an element of healing. There is this health crisis that we're trying to return and rebound from that speaks to healing. There is the grief and melancholy that has set in for us, whether we, are, we have lost somebody specifically so we're grieving them, or the melancholy of depression that comes from the mental health reality of us being cloistered in our homes, uh, stir right. crazy, where we started our conversation that's healing with that. So for me, there's something, the prevailing piece is about healing the land. If there's a message for me, okay, then it's about healing the land, which happens, has to do with restoring community, which has to do with expanding care to all people, right. which has to do with mobilizing uh, nationally yeah. uh, and across the board to make us something that is better than we were before. Yeah. Um, so if I had to kind of tag a message on it, it's really about how we heal the land. Yeah. Uh, and healing for a nation is not, again, it's not curing, it's about restructuring. Yeah. Um, um, so that's that, again, what's the vision for recovery? Um, and, uh, and, you know, quite frankly, what is this, you know, if you kind of go to Barber, right? What, what does a third reconstruction look like? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and after this kind of death and death tolls that we will be able to count with wars that we have seen before, perhaps it's pr appropriate to talk about reconstruction. Mm -hmm.